A walk through the Blue Mountains with Tread Lightly Eco Tours is more than a pleasant stroll through the gum trees, marvelling at the old waterfall along the way. It's more a path of enlightenment as the geology and biodiversity of the area are explained by our knowledgeable guide, Tim Tranter. Technically, the Blue Mountains aren't mountains at all. The nearest real mountain range is in fact the Great Dividing Range. The Blue Mountains could more accurately be called an uplifted fissured plateau, though it hasn't got quite the same ring to it. Layers of sand were laid down here between 450 and 300 million years ago when the area was just below sea level, which then hardened to form a sandstone base. On top of this solid base, softer layers of clay and mudstone were laid down around 240 million years ago, and the sandstone on the top is a mere 200 million years old. Around 80 million years ago, these layers of sand and mudstone were pushed up from sea level to the Blue Mountains' current altitude of around 1,000 metres. Over the last 10 million years, rain has been the main agent of creation here, carving the magnificent landscape we now know. Water runs back and forth through the layers of rock in a zigzag pattern, impelled downward by gravity, but prevented from taking a direct route by the layers of impermeable rock. It eventually emerges into the sunlight to join a million other droplets that form a rivulet, a creek, a river, and finally one of the 700 waterfalls that actually have names, or one of the thousands of unnamed others. The streams create fissures that have deepened and widened their courses with time. As the softer layers washed away, the sandstone above came crashing down, creating the great vertical cliffs we see today. Sandstone forms a dry, nutrient-deficient, sandy soil, and the environment on the plateau is quite harsh for plant and animal life. It's exposed to frequent lightning strikes, seasonally hot and cold winds, frost, poor drainage in areas, and rapid drainage in other areas. All these factors have produced local habitats requiring specialised plant adaptations, several of them in fact. Where we stand, we can see six biospheres within a 100 metre radius. Warm, temperate rainforest, tall eucalypt forest, ferny region, sedge swamp, dry grassy woodland, and the heath behind us on the plateau. A feature of most Australian environments is fire, and it's particularly prevalent here. The iron deposits long ago dissolved in the rock form a perfect magnet for lightning strike. So how have the trees and shrubs evolved to live through fire? Once fire rips through, gum trees grow epicormic twigs from buds beneath the bark that enable it to photosynthesize until the leaves grow back in just a few short weeks. It then drops these spindly twigs, which, along with its oily leaves, create perfect kindling for the next fire. This is the key to its survival producing a lot of ready kindling to help the fire burn quickly and move on, and a smooth, cool bark which is resistant to heat and flame. They have bulbous roots called lignituba and can reproduce from this root in the event of being struck down by lightning. Often, they'll trifurcate in the process, growing three new trunks where once there was just one. So the gum tree really is a fairly amazing plant. I said, uh... This is such an Our walk with Tread Lightly Eco Tours wasn't just about what we saw along the way, it was about coming to understand why things are the way they are and how delicate the balance of nature is.